This video demonstrates how to perform several checks and tests to assist in the diagnostics of a ParkSmart Auxiliary HVAC system. Always consult the Cascadia Troubleshooting Manual when attempting to diagnose a problem with the ParkSmart unit. Prior to performing any diagnostics on the ParkSmart system, it is important to determine if a problem exists or if the operator does not fully understand system operation and limitations. Consult the Climate Control section of the Driver's Manual for proper operation and use of the ParkSmart Auxiliary HVAC. For additional ParkSmart information, consult Service Bulletin 83-136. If a functional issue is found, use the Cascadia Troubleshooting Guide to determine the appropriate diagnostic procedure. This video covers the diagnostics on some of the most common issues seen on the AC portions of the system. Check for fold codes on the dash display. If codes are found, connect service link and resolve codes. Consult the Cascadia troubleshooting manual to repair any faults before continuing. A service link template specifically for ParkSmart is available to allow you to monitor some of the functions of the ParkSmart unit. It can be accessed by clicking on the main HVAC unit icon, templates and the drop down menu for J1939 templates. Here you can see the blower knob position temperature knob position, and whether or not the compressor is being driven. If the Park Smart unit does not turn on, turns on and then off after a few seconds, or has customer complaints of short run time, the first thing that must be confirmed is the condition of the batteries. With the engine off, check the voltage of both the main and auxiliary batteries. The voltage of both sets of batteries must be above 12.4 volts. If it is necessary to charge the auxiliary batteries, it is important to understand the specific charging requirements of AGM battery. Consult Service Bulletin 54-235 for proper charging instructions. Once voltage is confirmed, it is necessary to check the vehicle's charging system. With the engine running, check voltage of both sets of batteries. Voltage at both sets of batteries should be between 13.8 and 14.2 volts. If there is a difference of greater than 0.5 volts, check the battery cables and the interconnect controller for corrosion. With engine still running, check the operation of the interconnect controller. Locate the sense wire fuse in the main battery box. It should be within 6 inches of the positive cable connection. Inspect the sense fuse in the holder for signs of corrosion. Remove the fuse and check the voltage of the auxiliary battery. Voltage should be between 12.4 and 12.7 volts. It may take up to 15 seconds for the interconnect controller to disconnect. Slightly higher voltage would indicate a surface charge. A reading the same as the previous reading would indicate the interconnect controller is not disconnected. Reinstall the sense fuse and check voltage at the auxiliary batteries to again confirm that the interconnect controller reconnects the batteries. Again, this may take up to 15 seconds. If necessary, check the condition of the interconnect controller. Visually inspect the connections for signs of corrosion. Check signal wire voltage. It should be within 0.5 volts of main battery voltage. Check the other two wires for ground. Should be close to 0 volts and have continuity to battery negative. Once the battery system integrity has been verified, the fuses and relays that supply power to the unit need to be checked. Fuse 2 and Fuse 3 should have battery voltage on both terminals when the unit is off. The relays provide power to the other fuses in two ways. Relays LS3 and LS4 supply power when in parked mode, and relays LS1 and LS2 supply power in engine on mode. The relays can be very difficult to remove without causing damage to the terminal sockets. Do not pry the relays out for testing. With the unit in parked mode, check voltage on both terminals of each of the fuses. 
voltage should be within 0.5 volts of battery voltage. If there is power at the fuses in parked mode, the parked mode relays are OK. Start the engine and turn the unit on. Check power at the fuses again. If there is power at the fuses in the engine running mode, the running mode relays are OK. The evaporator temperature sensor and the bunk temperature sensor can affect the system operation and performance. Both can be checked without opening the unit. Disconnect and remove the sensor, measure the resistance of the sensor with an ohm meter, and compare the readings to the appropriate resistance table. After noting the resistance at ambient temperature, warm the sensor with your fingers and observe the change in resistance. This will confirm that the sensor is working properly. Further diagnostics and inspection requires the removal of the cabinet and unit cover. For the purpose of clarity in this video, the rest of the operation will be demonstrated on a benchtop unit. The unit does not need to be removed from the vehicle to perform these operations. To access the internal components, it is first necessary to remove the fuse and relay block and the blower motor. Disconnect the blower motor and the harness connections to the main power cables, the ECU, the ambient temperature sensor, the evaporator sensor, and the blend door actuator, and swing the harness out of the way. At this point, the unit can be visually inspected for signs of water damage due to a plugged drain tube. The drain tube can be accessed from under the unit. Pull out the drain tube from below, check for clogs and clear, then cut off the duct bill and reinstall. At this point, the ambient temperature sensor can be tested in the same manner as the bunk temperature and evaporator temperature sensors were tested previously and compared to the appropriate resistance table. Further inspection and diagnostics will require the removal of the top half of the unit housing. Inspect the wires and tubes for signs of rubbing and chafing. For further electrical checks, it will be necessary to install the blower motor and hook up the harness to the main power connector, the ambient temperature sensor, and the ECU. With the unit off, check the compressor thermal switch for continuity. It should be closed. The unit can now be turned on for further testing. Turn the blower control knob to position 4 and the temperature control to full cold and press the park button. Check each of the terminals on the top of the compressor for voltage and frequency. There should be approximately 5 volts and 9,000 hertz at each terminal. If the readings are OK and the evaporator is not getting cold, the unit has lost refrigerant. If the readings are not OK, the ECU is at fault. If the condenser fan is not operating, check for battery power, ground, and signal. The white wire is the signal wire and should have a voltage reading between 0 and 5 volts, depending on ambient temperature and control settings. Always consult the Cascadia Troubleshooting Manual and applicable service bulletins for testing procedures and specifications. If further diagnostics assistance is required, contact the Dealer Service Technical Support Line at 503-745-7769.